Okay, today on the podcast, I've got a very special guest all the way from the United States. She's the bassist of the band Cold. Lindsay Manfredi, how are you doing? I'm doing great. How are you? Good. Thanks for joining me anyway today. Appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for having me. No problem. So, like, you've been in the music industry over 20 years now? Yes. Yeah. What I want to know is, what is the first CD or cassette that you bought that got you into music? Oh, uh, are we talking? Okay. I want to say probably Debbie Gibson out of okay. the blue. Yeah. And but if we talk like um, back, like what got me into rock and roll, it would definitely be Pearl Jam 10 and Stone Temple Pilots Core. Yeah. And you play bass now in, in Cold. What was your first instrument? My first instrument was uh, piano and then guitar. Guitar. And then you ended up playing the bass then. How did you end up playing bass in, in bands? Well, I was, uh, I played guitar and I always did my own thing. I was always the front girl and always was a singer songwriter and things. And then yeah. I got married in 2006 and my ex-husband was really phenomenal. Well, is still is a phenomenal bassist. He plays the upright fretless bass and uh, he wanted to start a band, but he wanted to play guitar. So he was like, well, it's just the top four strings. So, you know, I'm going to teach you how to play bass. And I I just fell in love with it. It's just, I'm way better at bass than I am guitar. That's for sure. There always seems to be a shortage of basses. Not fair to say. Uh, I guess I, I feel like there are a lot of super talented bassists. I feel like there's so many amazing musicians out there, but I'm, I'm blessed and I'm honored that I get to, to do what I love and do it with a band that I love, you know? Yeah. One of my favorite bassists would be Sam Rivers from Limp Bizkit. Oh, he's because, great. Yeah, yeah. He's great. Um, whew, yeah. He's got some cool basses, the ones that glow and everything like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he came to our show when uh, the very last show that we had at the Viper Room a year and a half ago before pandemic happened. Yeah. So it was really cool to hang out with him and his wife and get to just shoot shit. And how's things been since obviously you haven't, your last gig was probably what, last March? Uh, no, it was last November of 2019. Oh, wow. Because we were supposed, it was literally two days before I was supposed to leave for the East Coast to start rehearsals. Um, that's when everything got shut down. So it was March 15th. My flight was out on March 17th. We were supposed to start the tour on April 2nd on the East Coast. And we had a two and a half month run and just everything got cut. But this time we're, we're doing a three and a half month run. So I'm really just excited to, to bust out of here mid-August. And we're going to be out through... Uh, mid-December. There's a lot of time to be made up. Oh, tons. I mean, we have a whole album that we haven't even really toured on yet. So I'm really excited for the fans to hear the new songs from the new album live. Yeah. And y you guys haven't been to Dublin yet or Ireland? We haven't been. I have yeah. been, but no, not as a band. And I really, really want to come. And we're going to do a European tour, so it's going to happen. Yeah. We just, you know, it just depends on when. And were you over here in Ireland on holidays, was it? No, it was for school. I took okay. this course and studied um, um, Irish literature. So I was like, learning about James Joyce and Oscar Wilde and, yeah, just did the whole experience. I was over there for, I think, three weeks. Okay, wh where did you study over here? That's what I studied, was literature. Yeah. No, but where? Oh, I no, it was um, for my school. I went to IU, so it was, okay. we all, like a whole group went over there and went to plays and went to all the places. And so it was a whole trip. And then we I took a bus and we went to, um, like I kissed the Blarney Stone and I know that locals piss on it, <laughs> but I mean, it was like held upside down and I, I have the certificate and everything, but I just, it was a really, really fun time. Yeah, you enjoyed Ireland anyway. Yes, absolutely. We've like, we have, there's loads of new metal bands that I like, guys like yourselves and Saliva and who else is there? Like Limp Bizkit have been here, Linkin Park were here when they were going, but there's a lot of new metal bands that haven't made it over here. So I'm hoping that after the pandemic, hopefully there's some kind of new metal resurgence. 
Yeah, well, I don't necessarily know if I consider cold new metal so much anymore as yeah. more alternative because the, the their style has definitely changed, and with the new album, it's changed a lot, but it's matured and it's it's brilliant, I think. My yeah. introduction to the band over here was through actually wrestling. So, oh, really? uh, yeah, so I'm a big wrestling fan, and back in the early 2000s, they were using a few cold tracks, and that's how I learned about the band over here because i hadn't heard about them because the music industry is not as open over in in ireland here as it is in the states you know really so they, they used a couple of songs for pay-per-views they used remedy and suffocate over here as well two amazing yeah those are great songs do you guys still play those songs we, yeah we played both of those on our yeah. last tour and you were saying the style has kind of changed like would you be doing a few more kind of acoustic versions of your songs now or the the tour that got rescheduled was actually more of a storyteller's acoustic tour or okay. that got canceled but we are going full on this time so it's not i think that, that we're gonna play more songs from the new album versus we only i think played three or four from the last time but so we want to definitely introduce people to more of that so it might be a little bit more of a slower set but we haven't we haven't really hashed that out yet which we'll do in the weeks leading up to when we kick off the tour when we're all together because what we typically do is we're going to rehearse probably 30 to 35 songs and then go from there and decide like okay what sounds the best and how are we going to put the set list together and everything so it'll we'll dwindle it down to 20 19 or 20 but yeah, yeah. it's like, it's a lot of work, but it's so much fun. It's so worth it. Yeah, and obviously things are starting to open up in America, which is great. And a lot of bands, as you say, we said off air, like are gonna start hitting the states now in the fall, which is great to see. Mm -hmm. We have no, we have no real sign of uh, music coming back, unfortunately, in this country yet. Really? How is the music yeah. scene over there? Yeah, you know, well, there's nothing. There's nothing open. Oh, right now there's nothing open. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm getting my first vaccine shot on friday and i'm getting my second one on the 30th of this month so i'm really stoked to just be vaccinated i don't i haven't gotten the covid yet uh yeah, hopefully i'm not going to or not that i'm aware of if if i did have it i i wouldn't have known i've gotten tested multiple times and i've been around people who have had it but i i never got it so thankfully so hopefully this will just, you know, knock it out of the water and I won't have to worry about it. Is it something that you'd be worried about playing in front of so many people if you didn't have it, the vaccine? You know, to be honest, no. And that's, I just have this whole self-healing philosophy and that I meditate and I, I follow Dr. Joe Dispenza and it's just one of those. I also have O negative blood, which I've heard is like the best blood to have. Okay. to fight all infections so you know i'm not too worried about it but i'm definitely getting it out of respect for everyone who has had it and for my band mates and for our fans it's just important to do because it's science i'm not yeah. i don't go i don't um subscribe to conspiracy theories on this vaccination it's just no. science we, we will leave that to the facebook experts i think <laughs> right, the facebook experts yeah <laughs> yeah. When was the last time you got to meet up with the guys, or have you been kind of keeping in contact like this, kind of remotely, or what's the story with, yeah, with you guys? I, well, Scooter and I talk pretty much on a daily basis and always have, because um, I used to live with him. I lived with him for years. I talked to Nick probably a couple times every well, every couple months I talk to Nick. I don't really keep up with the other guys. Just everybody's busy and doing their own thing. I've been promoting a book because I, I released a book this year or last yeah. year and we're all doing our own kind of music side music projects. But that being said, Scooter is writing for a new album, which is super exciting. But I think that we're going to really kind of focus on touring all of 2021 to mid 2022 and maybe talk about going into the studio at the end and the the process of you joining the band because you joined the band in kind of a, a dream scenario where you were a fan as well what was that experience mm -hmm. like it, 
it's surreal. I think that I would say about that. It, it was just one of those situations where I was touring with a band and we were with Saving Abel and we had just done, we had been on tour for so long and I was touring out of a van with a bunch of guys and yeah. our manager and shit and, you know, lugging out your own equipment doing all your own stuff. And somebody had taken a photo of me on stage and you know I've got the cold spider and I was playing the bass and they said it's a scooter and they were like hey you know this this chick's a really great bassist and here's her she's already branded and I had co-founded Girls Rock Indianapolis which is a non-profit summer um, camp for girls ages 8 to 16 in Indianapolis where I lived at the time and I had done a TED talk on it and Scooter just like looked me up and researched me and it was one of those things where I got a tweet from him and he was like check your other Facebook messages and I, he left his number and he was like we've been looking in on you like we've been checking on you and we would like for you to be a part of us so I, you know that's just truly a dream come true like how often do you have your you know the lead singer of your one of your favorite bands that you've been listening to for 15 years call yeah. you up and say oh hey join the band so i had a lot it was a lot of work i did i didn't play a five string and i still don't play a five string bass so thankfully scooter was like okay you've been doing on four string for so many years you can just keep playing that so um but you know now fast forward i joined the band in 2014 and it's 2021 and now i have my own signature series bass through diamond guitars which it's just really been an incredible last seven years yeah is there any particular show in those seven years that stands out for you that is your favorite show and why would that be? Well, I, I think that maybe the, the craziest one was we were rehearsing for that last tour and Breaking Benjamin, they were playing in Scranton and we were rehearsing 30 minutes away and you know, Chevelle was playing and I'm such a huge Chevelle fan. I mean, I was going to name my daughter Chevelle. <laughs> Tw 17 years ago, yeah. <laughs> she got Bella, but yeah, she, we call her Chevy for short sometimes because she loves yeah. as well. So anyway, Chevelle was playing and I was like, come on, let's just take a break and let's please, please go to the show. And so, you know, Nick and Ben grew up together and were in bands together before. So we just called him and uh, Ben was like, well, come up and do a song. And so we got to do Just Got Wicked in front of like a sold out Scranton Amphitheater show and Ben sang on it and that was just like one of the most again surreal moments of my life and but that that kind of re reuniting um aspect of Ben and Scooter was really great because then they put out the song Far Away which was on the you know top 10 in the active rock charts for weeks so yeah hopefully we're going to be doing a tour with them that would be really dope What's the craziest thing you've ever seen at a show in your career? It's what I always ask people, just a funny story that could happen. Maybe it was something in the crowd, maybe it was something backstage, like. Oh man, so much crazy stuff happens on tour. Yeah. There's just a lot of laughter, but I think that one of the craziest things happened in Nashville where we had a friend that used to manage cold back in the day, like a long, long time ago. And she just gets drunk sometimes and it's just like, boom, she went down and we're on stage yeah. and we saw her just go down and then we never saw her. So she's like her friend, <laughs> she like falls, passes out. And so they had to like get her out. But I mean, really, I don't, I don't even know. I probably see more crazy shit going to shows. I think that, the craziest thing I ever saw was seeing Weezer and I was still in high school and my dad went with me because I loved music so much. And I mean, he wore running shorts with a Grateful Dead t-shirt of mine, which is okay. this is back in, this is back in the nineties. And uh, this dude just ran across the stage naked. And <laughs> my dad was there and, and and these are screaming, cooking balls, cooking balls, cooking balls. And I was like, oh my God. That was an embarrassing moment with my dad. <laughs> but that's the, I think that that might be the craziest thing I've ever seen. Fair enough. 
Um, <laughs> so you, you're, you're busy enough as well, like outside of music. Like um, I was reading that you have your own like candle business as well. Do you want to tell me a bit about that? Yeah, I actually just released the two new candles last night. So I've been so yeah. busy for the last 24 hours. Really, I barely slept. Um, preparing orders and pouring candles. But yeah, I started the company. Well, I didn't really start the company. So my friend um, who I'm no longer partners with, she had taught me how to pour candles a couple years yeah. ago and she had started. And when I got back from tour, so she had started her own kind of company and brand. And when I got back from tour, I was like, hey, let's do a cold candle. And we were like, okay, we're going to probably sell 25. And it just ended up blowing up. So we released like a winter collection and then a spring collection, then a fall collection. And now um, I'm not with her anymore because I also live hours away from her. So I can't just yeah. go down there. So I had to kind of create my own candle. Like I just created my own candle studio recently here in Hollywood. And, uh, you know, Trisha didn't have time to do all the things that I needed to do. So we just kind of parted ways and now I'm doing it on my own and they're great. Either made with pure coconut wax. So you get an over 50 hours burn with them. And all of the candles are based after cold songs. Okay, cool. Uh, all of them are different scents and I, it's just something that I love to do and I'm passionate about it. So I'm, haven't done candles since December, so I'm very happy to have everything here that I can just do it. And do you guys ship internationally, or is it just the states for a moment? Um, well, I I'm starting to do a flat rate international, so I'm yes, I'm yeah, going cool. to do it now. Yeah, I just uh, someone just got one from Canada. Cool. So. And your book then, Unfuckwittable. A yeah. guy that inspired badassery. That is an unbelievable name for a book. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it made sense to me at the time. Yeah. What, <laughs> you know? what, what is it about? Well, it's really about the law of attraction and, uh, you, you know, being in love with yourself enough to not give a fuck about what anybody thinks about you and, and to just do your dream and to keep going forward because people, you know, when you're successful, people are going to talk a lot of shit. And when you're trying to get there, people are going to talk a lot of shit. And I wanted to tell my story and I had gone through a nasty breakup and I was kind of getting to a point where I was getting back to myself because when you do practice spirituality and meditation and you're not around the right people, uh, they want to tell you that you think that you're better than them. Just like when little things don't bother you. And I just was around a whole lot of, a lot of vampires and I needed to, mm -hmm. to break free from that. So I did. And in doing that, I, I told my story and, and it's, it's doing so well. I, I can't believe it. I still get emails on a daily basis saying that how it's changed their lives and, that's exciting but i all really owe so much to scooter ward because he he gave me all of these opportunities and gave me a platform to share love and truth and and kindness to people who need it the most actually so yeah and before that then we, we touched on a little bit earlier the girls rock in indianapolis mm -hmm. uh, do you want to tell me about that and what you do for young girls well, I don't, I don't have anything to do with that anymore since I don't live there. But yeah, yeah so the, we have a, an amazing board and the, the rock camp is, they're doing it a couple of times a year. I know that they were doing it um, over online for a while. But uh, so it's a, it's a summer camp for girls. It's five days, six days where you come in and the girls pick their instruments and they, um, we put the bands together. And then they have to work together and they have quiet band practice and and they have lessons during the day and then they have loud band practice in the afternoon. But in the meantime, they're learning about women in rock and rock in yeah. general. And they're learning how to you know, make their own logos and they come up with their own band names and by, then they write their own songs. So at the end of the week, they perform their song in front of an always sold out auditorium. So it's just, it's very empowering. And we want to teach, you know, let's give, it's empowering. And do you think- Did I lose you? No, no, you're there. Do you think that maybe, <laughs> maybe years ago that um, 
maybe it was a lot harder for women to get into the the music industry do you think it was all kind of male dominated was that some of the thinking behind it was it to get just well, a bit more maybe equality i i have to to really be honest about this because yeah. i there were so many women that paved the way for me i me personally i really gotten lucky because i haven't experienced a lot of sexism or i've yeah. always been treated like one of the guys and honestly i i am one of the guys i i don't act like a lot of females that i do know personally i don't have a very i don't have a lot of friends like my circle is pretty small i've got people that i i'm truly care about and i love but uh, i i hang out with the guys and i've i've never really experienced anything but uh, women have and you know unfortunately for them but i think at the same you just have to do your thing you have to get out there you got to play your instrument do the best you can and you know hopefully you'll be around some great people i mean the the most i've ever gotten on tour is we had a new bus driver come in and he's like oh i thought you were one of the girlfriends of the guys you know because he walked in and saw me at sound check playing bass so that's annoying but the dude was also like 60 and yeah. he, didn't, he didn't last on our bus very long <laughs> but it just is what it is unfuckwittable that's yeah. what you are you that's won't take any shit from people you really have to be and it, i i i think i probably take shit from people i i had a really tragic thing happen today uh, with the falling out with a friend and uh, it's uh, it's really weighing on me and I'm not, I don't need to respond. I know that what was said isn't true and it's just, okay. It's just, you're okay. You're not gonna be in my life anymore. That's okay. You know, mourn that loss and move on, but just moving forward. That's the main thing that you can always do. And that's what the book is about is moving forward, recognizing what doesn't work for you and then choosing what does and what makes you feel good and then go with that. Yeah. In terms of plans for the future then both musically and with the, with the book, like do you plan on writing another one and what's your plan going forward with the music apart from the shows that are coming up? Yes. Not well, I don't think I'm ever going to stop doing any of the things that I love to do because I love to write. I love to play music. I love to make candles. I, I really want to build an empire. I've got a daughter that's about to go to college and I, it's just, I really want to build something that, that matters and have a legacy. So yeah, I've already got the preface for my new book completed and it's kind of like a gang book. I've got people writing different chapters because I, it's just, an overall basis and it's a, about bullying. So it's going to definitely be towards, you know, kids that are, I don't know, 12 to whatever age. And that's going to happen. I'm going to continue to play with cold. I write my own music. I work on music with other people. Uh, I just always, I'm going to do all of it. <laughs> yeah. Always. I'd like to get into production eventually and band management so that could happen down down the road but right now i'm just taking it a day at a time and i'm really excited that we're you know scooter's been not sleeping when when we go through these uh times of getting a tour put together and all the little ins and outs nobody sleeps because we have these ideas in our head and then we're doing posters and we're doing routing and we're you know all those little fine details that go into it it's a lot. And uh, so, yeah, none of us are really <laughs> getting a whole lot of sleep right now, but that's a good thing. Cause once we have it all dialed in, it's going to just be like smooth sailing. I suppose it's kind of stressful trying to organize it just with the way the world is at the moment. And in America, maybe different States might have different capacity laws mm -hmm. based, on, based on things going forward. Like, so I'd imagine it is pretty tough for you guys. Well, I, a lot of venue, we're still able to do a lot of things and, Granted, given the fact that the vaccine is going to be completely open to everyone come yeah. the beginning of next month, there's no reason why we shouldn't be all back into the swing of things by fall. Everyone should be vac vaccinated. It's a, it's important to be a responsible citizen if you're going to go out in public and if you want to go to rock shows. But I, I, I know that the people and our fans, especially and fans of all different genres of music, all we want to do is go to a fucking show. 
Yeah. I got like I saw my first live music. Well, I went to Ohio and went to a rehearsal space, so I got to see live music back in um, I want to say December, but then. I was in Vegas over Super Bowl weekend and there was a very like a private thing and I got to see this really dope reggae band and it was just incredible. It was nice to just dance and everybody was spread out, but um, it was really nice to see live music and I'm yeah. really excited to get back on stage and play it. Yeah. Listen, it was brilliant to, to talk to you and maybe we'll catch up again after the tour and see how it went. Yeah, I'd love to. Yeah. And Thanks a million for your time. We'll be over there soon. So yeah, you you make sure and put a word in for Ireland. Come over okay. with Link Biscuit or someone. I would love. Yeah, we'd love to do that. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll see you soon. Thanks a million, Lindsay. Thanks. Bye.